assembling the upper receiver for an AR-15. Uh, you can look at this upper. This is the one I did have Cerakoted again. Um, it's been partially assembled. You have your forward assist already assembled. Basically all that's in here is a the forward assist rod. There's a spring in there and then there's a roll pin that keeps it from coming out. And you can see, I don't know if you can see in the video, but it catches the side of the bolt carrier group <coughs> and uh, pushes it forward in case it didn't lock all the way forward. And also you have your dust cover. It's already assembled. Pin, spring, and dust cover. Now be aware if you ever do want to change these out, you will have to pull your barrel off. Uh, this pin slides out from the rear to the front. So once you screw on your bolt, I mean once you screw on your barrel, the barrel nut captures that pin and will not allow that to come out. So if you ever want to change this out and you have your barrel off, go ahead and do it then. Otherwise you gotta take your barrel off and do it. And it's just a lot of work to do all that. For this upper, uh, for the barrel, chosen a Wilson Combat 18 inch stainless steel barrel. It's got a 1 and 8 twist, so it'll help stabilize some of the heavier bullets will be firing. So it'll be good for hopefully out to six, 700 yards, but we'll see. I plan on using around a 75 to 77 grain bullet through here. And it has a 5.56 five, barrel. For the handguard, the Geisley Mark IV M Lock. And uh, this is coated in their dark, desert dark earth or color. So uh, maybe they call it the desert dirt color. But either way, it's not a. Uh, it's not going to match everything. Even they, even their uh, components that have that color designation, have a different shade. So. It's pretty close to what I have painted on here, or coated on here, so I think it'll work out okay. It's going to look pretty good when it's done. Again, some of the tools we're going to need for doing this assembly. Have your roll pin starter punches, regular punches, roll pin punches, two ounce hammer. And uh, one of the import more important pieces is your uh, block for mounting your upper tube. So what it does is slides in here and close it back. And then the upper sits in this block, it clamps in here, and this holds it in place. You put this in a vise, and that holds your upper in place while you are screwing on your barrel nut. It's pretty important since this is aluminum that you give as much support as you can, and this will give it the support you need to to torque down that uh, barrel nut. One other thing you'll need is some antices. Put this. Uh, you'll put this around the threads on your on your upper so that uh, the barrel nut doesn't get seized on there. One other tool you're going to need is your torque wrench. I just have a regular deflecting beam torque wrench. Uh, and you'll need your barrel nut wrench. Now if you buy a Geisley barrel, uh, hand guard, they're going to give you this nut wrench that goes with their uh, barrel nut. This is a DPMS common wrench for uh, your typical M AR-15, M16. This will also do the uh, flash suppressor and then this is for your your castle nut. And also Magpul makes a good one. It's kind of dual purpose. You have uh, this type and then the pin type, so it'll fit different ones. But if your handguard doesn't didn't come with a barrel nut wrench, you'll definitely have to get one of these types or get the Magpul one. 
and each of them have uh, slots to put a torque wrench, either a half inch drive or I think all of them are half inch drives one I have uh, for you to put your torque wrench into. Alright, now I've got the upper and its uh, assembly block. So um, I'll show you about putting the anises onto the threads before I put the upper in a larger block or a larger vise. <clears throat> Be careful when using the anises, it lo a little bit goes a long ways and it's very hard to get off off of anything you get it on so just put a little bit on the threads on the leading thread and that's plenty right there Before you put the barrel on, you can take the barrel nut and just run it through there to spread that out evenly. So now I have it on the barrel nut and the upper. All right, we'll move to the big vise next, so we can uh, torque this torque this barrel on here. Okay, we've got the upper and the vise. Uh, one trick you can do when in, when assembling your barrel is take a little bit of blue Loctite, put it around the barrel. This is the barrel extension, actually, and this will help ensure that you have even contact all the way around. between your barrel and your upper. Because so it's just aluminum and you want to give it as much support as you can. There's a pin on the top of your barrel extension and it goes lines up with the slot in the top of your upper. Alright. Now your barrel's on there. Alright, next you slide your barrel nut over the barrel. Tighten it. Okay, so we're going to take this to 40 foot pounds. There's 40 foot pounds. So, if you don't know how one of these deflecting beam torque wrenches work, basically you pull on the handle until, it, until the pointer points at 40 pounds. You want to have your head at a 90 degree angle from the center of where you're turning. If you do it like this, it's not going to measure correctly because you got extra distance. So turn it 90 degrees. That way your center line distance from where you're turning is the same for the length of the torque wrench that it's calibrated for. If you do it the other way, you're going to put more torque than you expected. So let me check the torque one more time now that I've let it sit for a second. And it's still at 40. All right, now we have a upper with the barrel. All right, before we start getting any further along, uh, one thing I like to do at this point is headspace. The bolt I'm going to use with the barrel I just installed. So for this gun, I'm using a uh, Daniel Defense bolt carrier group and bolt. 
you can buy these parts independently as well you can get a different bolt you can get different firing pins different bolt carrier group uh, usually it's just easier to go ahead and buy the whole thing but you can buy it all all apart and build this part yourself too I'm not going to get into those details um, you should know how to take one of these apart just for uh, cleaning, cleaning your gun uh, because the inside of your bolt carrier group where your bolt rides does get pretty dirty with carby, carbon from the uh, gas blowback system so but uh, what I want to do talk about what I do want to talk about right now is uh, head spacing it and uh, this is a critical point in building your rifle this is going to determine where it's going to be a safe gun to fire or not if you don't feel comfortable doing this part I definitely would recommend going to see a qualified gunsmith that can do it and check it for you to make sure that uh, your gun is going to lock up correctly and not cause damage to yourself or the gun so I got basically two gauges. These are headspace gauges. This is a go gauge. It's got a green band around it. Some of them don't, but this one does. It says 5.56 by 45, which is what this gun is chambered in. And then here is a no go gauge. Same thing, 5.56 by 45. So what you do is when you you'll put I'll put the bolt in here in a minute into the upper and with hand force only you close the bolt on the no, on the go gauge and it should close completely and lock up when you open it back up the go gauge should come out on the no go gauge you do this test again you push the bolt forward with hand strength only and it should not lock in if it does lock in your head space is too great and your guns unsafe if it won't close on the go gauge you have too little headspace and it's not safe to shoot and if it won't close it shouldn't fire anyway so let me put uh, my charging handle in with charging handle I went with the Patriots Ordnance Factory Tomahawk ambidextrous charging handle Alright, so I'm going to drop in the go gauge into the chamber and with just finger force it locks up. Now this bolt's tight, it's brand new. But you can tell it's locked up because it's, it's uh, flush with the face of the back of the upper, upper uh, receiver. So we'll pull it out and it ejected. So now we're going to try the same thing with the no-go gauge. Alright, the uh, extractor clipped over it, but it did not close. You can see the back is not flush. And the bolt is not completely closed. So our bolt carrier group and our barrel are a safe combination. At this point I feel comfortable going forward and building the rest of the rifle. If there wasn't a pro if there was a problem, I need to disassemble the barrel from the upper again and either get the barrel looked at or the bolt looked at uh, and see if it was either a manufacturing problem or if maybe they're just not a good mix. But from, what, from the test we just did, it shows it's going to be alright. Alright, now that we've got the uh, barrel installed, the next step is going to be putting the gas block and gas tube in. I've got the Geisley Super Gas Block. It came with the handguard. Uh, I have the Allen key that comes with it. We'll need that to put the gas block on there. We'll need the roll pin starting punch, roll pin punches, and again the ball peen hammer. First thing you want to do though is test fit your gas block on your barrel making sure it slides on there freely. It does. 
and this barrel has a dimple in the bottom of it where the lock nuts will go. That helps keep the gas block and lined up lined up. It also has a hole to uh, run a pin through if you want to pin your gas block. This barrel's not cut out for that, so if I wanted to do that, I'd have to mill that hole down into the uh, barrel, and then I could put a pin through it, and that'll keep it from rotating as well. So the first thing is to put the gas tube into the gas block. You notice the gas tube has a curve in it. You want to make sure that your gas block is uh, oriented right. So this is up. You can see the hole right here for your gas tube pin. And then your gas tube needs to have the bend going up to where it enters the top of the upper receiver. If you get 180 degree out, 180 degrees out, when you try and install your gas block, it's not going to your, your gas tube is not going to fit into your upper. So get the gas block roll pin, put that in our roll pin starter. Alright, so I had to put it in a vise to be able to hold it steady while I'm still doing this and uh, videoing at the same time. So, I've got the pin started. I'm going to check the other side and make sure my holes lined up on my gas tube. It is. It wasn't, but it is now. Take my roll pin punch and push it, push it the rest of the way. that pin lined up as best as possible. Trying to even it out on both sides. There we go. So now the gas tube is pinned to the gas block. Now we're going to slide the gas tube and gas block onto the barrel, lining up the tube with the port in the upper. And then we'll put the lock nut in. Like we did on the other, uh, like on the barrel where we put the blue Loctite. I'm going to put blue Loctite on this as well. Keep it from vibrating loose.
Once this first one is set and centered, you can put the second one in. It's a little bit too much Loctite. I'll wipe it off with a towel. So that's our gas tube and gas block installed in the upper. Alright, now that we have the gas tube and gas block on, we're going to put the handguard on. And each handguard is going to be a little bit different on how it attaches, uh, but uh, the way the Geisley M lock works, this is the uh, Mark IV 15 inch rail. Uh, you see the grooves in the barrel nut. These two locking bolts right in there. And then the uh, there's two indexing nuts on the side that will align the top uh, grooves with the, with the uh, upper. So that way your Picatinny rails will be aligned and uh, it won't be off. So if you have something that's you got your rear sight mounted back here and a front sight mounted up here, they'll be in alignment. And I'll show you a trick to uh, get those aligned. First, let me take out the locking bolts and slide the handguard over the barrel. Install these. I'm not going to make them uh, real tight yet, just so they don't fall out. All right, and you can see there's enough movement to allow this to come either way, off center but we want them to be lined up right. So a trick to doing that is if you have a solid scope mount you can line it up on both of from the, that'll bridge that gap between the upper and the handguard and then tighten it up. If you tighten these up evenly It'll line them up. It'll line up that uh, the handguard with the upper. But again, you want to make sure you're bridged across that mating surface there. Once you've done that, you can tighten down your Allen screws. That'll keep it aligned.
done, you take the scoop mount off. When you know it, the bolt came apart on the uh, upper, on the uh, scope mount. At the time I was trying to show you how to get that back on, so I'll have to fix that. But I did get it off, and you can see that it's aligned by using that technique. That's everything on the upper, except the flash hider, and I've kept the uh, threads protected. If you are assembling your gun without flash hider on there or a, any kind of muzzle device on the end, make sure you keep the thread protector on there until that's on. So the next thing I'll be getting it for this part, it will be the muzzle brake for the front, for the barrel, and then uh, we'll be completed with that part. All right, now we're going to finish up this lower. Um, we got a couple more pieces to put in here. Uh, mostly the buffer uh, stop, which goes right here, and then your rear takedown pin, and also your buffer tube. So, buffer tube has been Cerakoted the same color. buffer tube ring and the castle nut are all the same color but uh, first we'll want to put our buffer stop and spring into the lower so it fits in here just like this and what ends up keeping it in there is the actual buffer tube Also, we're going to put in our last detent in the take in the rear takedown pin. So this will be the in your lower parts kit. This will be the other long skinny spring. You had two that were the same size. This is the second one that's left over. put our takedown pin in. You want to keep the groove to the rear. This is where your detent and spring are going to go. It helps if I put it in on the right side. Your pins are going to go out the same side. They both come out on the right. You're going to put a little bit of grease down this detent hole. The detent in. Followed by the spring. Also on the buffer stop. Put some grease down there too. Put it on the spring.
the buffer stop itself. What this plunger does is it keeps the buffer from coming out of the buffer tube when you disassemble the gun. You have to press this down to be able to get the buffer out and uh, get the spring out. So next, put your castle nut and your buffer, tu buffer tube. You want to thread this in to your rear receiver, rear of your lower receiver. I'll try and get this where you can see it. You want it to capture your buffer tube stop with the buffer tube itself, or the capture the buffer stop with the buffer tube itself. Now to get it lined up, to make sure your buffer tube is lined up right, you have a groove in the back of this washer, and then it fits down into your lower. So once you have everything tightened up, your buffer stop should be captured, your rear takedown pin spring and detent should be installed. It clips like it's supposed to. Next thing you have to do is put this in a big vise and torque it. So I'm going to use the Magpul Armor's wrench. The reason I like it is because it slides over and gives you a good fit on the castle nut. This is where you want to use your lower block hold in a vise to give you the torque you need. You don't have to get crazy with the amount of torque you put on here. We are just talking about aluminum pieces. So uh, you can crack this part of your receiver. Uh, if you put enough on there you could probably crack the, the magwell or you could damage the buffer tube. So use enough to cinch it down good if it uh, and then check it you know after you get done firing after your first test firing if it's coming loose you're going to put a little more torque on it you can also put some blue loctite on it which will hold it even better so there is the lower assembled except for putting the buttstock on it So I'm using a Rock River Arms buttstock. Just slides on, and you'll have to 
lift that pin up higher to be able to get it slide on all the way than what your lever is going to allow you. Fully assembled lower. All right, now that we got our upper assembled, our lower assembled, let's put all the pieces together to make our fully assembled rifle. Charging handle. Bolt. Buffer tube spring. You don't want to forget that part. Buffer tube. If you forget to put your buffer tube, I mean your uh, buffer and your buffer spring in there into your buffer tube, first time you test fire your gun, uh, it's not going to be pleasant. Your bolt will go into the rear of your buffer tube. Right, line up our takedown pins. There we have our fully assembled rifle. Let's do some more, let's do a couple more function checks. Pull the charging handle back, make sure it drops. It does. The gun on safe. Pull the trigger, make sure it doesn't fire. It does not. Put it on fire. It does fire. Now let's put the magazine in. Make sure it locks back with the empty magazine. It does lock back. Put the magazine out. Press the bolt release. Bolt releases. Safe. Still does not fire. Hope this has been uh, helpful videos to uh, show how to build an AR. From the ground up um, there's other ways to do it i'm sure there are some ways that are uh, easier and maybe better that's the way it's worked for me if you do have any uh you know you want to get a book or anything on it there's a book out there called the ar-15 complete assembly guide by walt kulik uh, you can check out that book i've used it in the past uh, and it's really helpful thanks again for watching be safe out there